So we are now connected with Achichis Consortium Director, Mr. Liam Prince, who is joining us live all the way from Perth, Australia. Good morning, Liam. Thank you for joining us here today. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Caroline. It's I, lovely to be with you. Right. I'm not going to speak to you in Bahasa because your Bahasa is probably much better than mine. So, could you tell us a little... Badu. <laughs> tell us a little bit more about Achichis and what the program focuses on. Great. Thanks, Paul. Well, Achichis was actually established in uh, the mid-90s, so about 1994, 95. It was really uh, set up uh, as a national mechanism for um, Australian universities to send Australian university students up to Indonesia uh, for periods of study. Uh, at that time, it was really focused on uh, sending students for a full semester or even, even for a full year. So it is a consortium of universities of currently um, uh, 16 Australian universities and two international universities, uh, one in the UK and one in, in, in the Netherlands, uh, that, uh, yeah, joined together, got together to create a, a, a mechanism to overcome what were uh, sort of institutional, bureaucratic immigration barriers to actually getting uh, Australian and international students into Indonesian universities. And, you know, 26, 27 years on, by and large, that's still uh, what Achichis is in the business of doing. That's so cool. Yeah, you know, and Achichis has become a key authoritative institution within the realm of Australia and Indonesia relation, and it has also linked with Australians and Indonesians since its establishment in 1994, Paul. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. So why did Achichis uh, choose Indonesia as a part of your consortium then, Mr. Prince? Uh, that's a good question, Caroline. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a part of the, the consortium. It was sort of the reason for being. Uh, Indonesia really was mm -hmm. the focus of the organisation from the very beginning. It, it grew as an organisation uh, out of the Indonesian studies departments of uh, the constituent member universities. You have to remember that Australia has quite a long history of uh, scholarship of yeah. Indonesia. So lots of uh, uh, scholars of all, all you know, of Indonesian society, of culture, of uh, politics. Uh, uh, so we have, I guess you'd say many, like, pakar uh, Indonesia in, in the universities in Australia. So a uh, just grew out of that culture of scholarship uh, on Indonesia. Um, so it really had, yeah, as I say, a focus on Indonesia built into the very foundation of the of the, in the establishment of the organisation. So it wasn't really a, a choice. It wasn't sort of a choice of it could be any organisation. Right. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, any destination country. It was always right. going to be Indonesia for, for Achichis. But what I would say or add is that Achichis, with its history now of 25 plus years of doing what it does, has... Uh, drawn the attention, I guess, of, of, of uh, you know, elements of the Australian government uh, and I, I guess the Indonesian government as well as a success story in the bilateral relations. And there's now um, talk of um, looking at the Achichis model, that consortium model, and applying it to other destination countries that Australian students might be interested in studying in. So I think we're a good news story in the Australian-Indonesian bilateral relationship, but we also serve as a possible model for um, Student, Australian student engagement with other destinations, particularly in, in the Indo-Pacific uh, region. Right. Okay, so take us through it, Liam. What uh, support do you provide? Say a student wants to join the program and study here in Indonesia. How does this come about? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess a teacher offers a whole suite or a pipeline of services, I guess, to Australian students that, uh, that starts really with just... Uh, the marketing of, of Indonesia as a destination for Australian students. Now, it, it may surprise you guys, it may not, but you know, Indonesia is not really on the radar of, of, of that many Australian students, particularly as a, as a destination for study abroad. Mm -hmm. So one of our key functions in Australia is an advocacy and, and a marketing one, which is to put put Indonesia on the map, put the, in, seed the idea in the imagination of Australian students that it's a destination, it's a place worthy of them investing, say, a semester of their lives, of their degree, um, to go and explore. So that would be, uh, our first function is just is just marketing Indonesia as that destination. Mm -hmm. Once the students uh, heard about it and applied for our program, then there's a whole lot of uh, work that goes on pre prior to their departure. I mentioned some of the immigration and sort of bureaucratic um, work involved in getting a student in, in Indonesia. We used to joke that it was, um, probably easier to get a person on Mars than it was to get uh, an Australian <laughs> student on the ground for credited study in Indonesia. Uh, and it's become a little bit easier, um, uh, but and we've become a lot more practiced at it, but it's still not an easy 
um, thing to do. You know, you have to deal with, um, you know, the, the, the Ministry of Education to get a study permit. You need to get uh, a right, the right kind of visa from out of Dirjan uh, Imigrasi. You know, there's a good, and then we have to get them enrolled at the Indonesian universities that aren't necessarily always um, 100% set up to receive in, uh, international students. And so there's a lot of work that goes to just get them in country. Um, then once they're on the ground uh, in Indonesia, um, I guess one of the, again, well, another key function of a teacher has always been to provide a, a degree of uh, pastoral care and assurance to the universities back here that the students will be looked after and taken care of in Indonesia. So they're still, I think because Indonesia is still um, somewhat of a, um, uh, uh, an unusual destination, less so than it was 20 years ago, but still yeah. a, a sort of a destination on the, on the margins of uh, most Australian students' minds and also universities, that I guess there's a degree of concern that the students uh, about their security and their welfare while they're up right. in Indonesia. So, so a teacher provides, I guess, an overlay of um, pastoral care support, a sort of ready-made network. We have offices in Jogjakarta, in, in Jakarta, uh, and uh, formerly in Bandung. Um, so we have, and we have a 15 to 20 staff uh, spread throughout Indonesia there whose sole job is to look after those students while they're in Indonesia and to get them um, oriented once they uh, are in Indonesia, to help them find accommodation, um, you know, simple things like if they get really ill, you know, and they don't, they're away from their family support networks, we make sure that, that they get to, the, to, to a hospital and get the right uh, medical care that they need, that their, their insurance matters are taken care of back with their home universities here. So there's a whole range of in-country yeah. care um, support that goes on. That's perfect because, you know, as a student, like most, most students, it would be their first time even leaving uh, Australia and going to a foreign country. So it's not just education that they're thinking of. There's all these other unknowns that are on their mm -hmm. mind. So it's great that you guys covered that entire scope. I was just saying it's very fascinating because maybe for some students, especially we know this generation right now, they love to go traveling. So maybe, you know, these Australian students are very common to come to Indonesia, especially to Bali for their summer vacay or their mm -hmm. winter vacations and whatnot. And now uh, with Achichis, it's like a different spectrum where you're kind of giving another medium for them to go to school here in Indonesia. And if you think back 20 years ago when I graduated from high school, everybody is like in a rush to go to Australia to get their bachelor mm -hmm. degree or to, you know, take classes in Australia. But now you're also giving that chances for Australian students to come here to Indonesia, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, get their education and also, you know, be, you know, at a feel of how to live here in Indonesia. Now, with Achichi itself, Mr. Prince, aside from learning Bahasa Indonesia, what other programs does Achichi offer to these students before they jump into the wagon and arrive here in Indonesia? Uh, thanks, Caroline. Yes, yeah, so I think explained about the history of a teacher's growing out of uh, those Indonesian language departments. So mm -hmm. for the first 10 years of the organization's life, really the students were coming from those uh, like Sastra, Bahasa Indonesia, those programs that were they were studying Indonesian language. Yeah. And the reason they were going to Indonesia was to get the in-country uh, language study uh, practice and, 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 and learning. Now, unfortunately, over the last 20 years in Australia, the number of Australian uh, both high school students and uh, university students that are studying Indonesian or say even majoring in Indonesian has been declining uh, and that's been a 20 year trend. So, uh, you know, where when I first started uh, studying Indonesian 20 years ago at, at, at here at UWA, uh, we had, uh, you know, some 2,000 students around the country studying Indonesian at university, mm -hmm. and that's, that figures more like 700 students today. So we knew as an organization 10 years ago we were going to have to di uh, diversify, almost 20 years ago now, to diversify our programs out of just specifically Bahasa Indonesia and Indonesian language. So now, um, thanks, uh, in the early 2000s, we, we started experimenting with different program formats and also disciplines. Uh, so we now offer not just semester programs, but programs that are, you know, two-week length, six-week length, uh, you know, summer internship programs across a range of disciplines, including um, journalism, mm -hmm. uh, creative arts and design, business, law, uh, public health, um, tourism. Uh, so a whole range. So what we're doing now is drawing Australian students from across the campus, across uh, different uh, parts of the university population, um, and introducing them to Indonesia via a different hook, if you like, or a mm -hmm. different a different way into Indonesia. So perhaps they've never never studied Indonesian. Most of a majority of our students now have never studied 
uh, Bahasa Indonesia before they come to mm -hmm. Indonesia, but they're coming for a, another reason, a sort of an occupational, vocational reason. But all of our programs have embedded within them a very significant uh, component of Indonesian language learning. Right. So you, you mentioned uh, there's quite a few programs that are involved. What are some of the most popular ones? Yeah. Uh, so a few years ago, in, in, in 2014, the Australian government launched a, a program called the New Colombo Plan, which is a, a funded from our Department of Foreign Affairs. It provided quite a lot of funding to Australian universities to uh, develop programs um, in the Indo-Pacific, in places like Indonesia, for Australian students. Now, Achichis has um, been uh, uh, has really benefited from this program, and there's been a lot of funding available for us to diversify our program offerings, like you mentioned. So, yeah, we've been able to experiment in a vast in, in all these different uh, areas. So, you ask, what are the most popular ones? So, um, to our surprise, we've we a few years ago launched a, a law program. A, 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 it's called a Law Professional Practicum, where uh, Australian students from law schools around Australia, uh, they come up to Indonesia, to Jakarta, and they spend two weeks at Atmajaya uh, University mm. doing intensive language study, but also doing a series of seminars about the Indonesian legal system, mm. uh, meeting with practitioners uh, in, 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 in Jakarta. And that's all preparatory work for a, then a four-week professional placement, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, a, in law firms or in other legal NGOs. Uh, up in Indonesia, and that's been a hugely successful oh, wow. mm -hmm. uh, program. So you know, that's, we've had we've run that program since I think about 2019, yeah, 2017, and we've had hundreds and hundreds of Australian law students go through that. So that was a really that was a big surprise. And I think the second program, uh, a really popular program, again somewhat surprising, uh, was a public health program. So we've been partnering with. Um, uh, UI with Universitas Indonesia mm -hmm. and their, their Faculty of Public Health. Mm -hmm. And that's a two-week tour of bringing Australian students up to Indonesia to mm -hmm. learn about the Indonesian health system and the public health system up there. So it's been also very, very, very popular with our Australian students. That's interesting. Yeah. Legal and health. Yeah. That. And you know, you were just speaking about like the best and prominent universities in Indonesia, Atmajaya, of course, right. University in Indonesia. So what really takes your consideration when you recommend uh, Indonesian universities to these students? I mean, you were saying like a university in Indonesia, University of Kajamada <coughs> and whatnot. Uh, these major Indonesian universities, would you often recommend to Australian students and why would you recommend these? Uh, is it more to their align of majors and, or, 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 you know, any other factors? Yeah, thanks, Caroline. Well, yeah, there's a bit of a process. Um, I, I mean, the, the shadow looking in the background here is that We've had two years of pandemic, right? And we've mm -hmm. basically had to stop uh, our operations in country for, for two years, which is the first time in the history. This is the longest hiatus or break in, in, in our activities in Indonesia uh, since the organisation was established. Um, but before that, before, so up until March 2020, uh, we, we had been expanding our operations, you know, uh, every year since 2014 because of the new Colombo plan um, and, and, offer, and developing and uh, offering new, like a new program, or sometimes in a, in a year two new programs every year since 2014. Um, there's a bit of a process involved in that. Uh, we are, as I said, a consortium of Australian universities, so they need to be consulted about what kind of program, new program they may, might want to see in Indonesia, what discipline uh, there might be student demand for. Um, and then we need to go into in, in Indonesia, working through our officers and our staff in Indonesia, to consult with uh, Australia, uh, Indonesian part, potential partner universities that might be able to partner with us in the delivery of that program. So there's a bit of a consultation and surveying process to see, you know, what the um, particular strengths of a university might be or a faculty. Yeah. So we're, we're taking in a, ra a range of things there from the practical ability to deliver the course, the expertise of the staff they have on, on staff in a, in a particular faculty. Um, and I guess to a degree, the reputation as well, because um, uh, universities back in Australia are mindful, I guess, of the educational quality of uh, what the students will be uh, the quality of the tuition they'll be receiving uh, in Indonesia. Of course. So uh, let's look ahead now, uh, Liam. So Achichi's graduates, uh, what sort of opportunities are they presented with once they go through this program um, in regards to working perhaps uh, in Indonesian companies or NGOs? Uh, what, uh, how much of their chances have increased in relation to what subject or what jobs they can uh, land in regards to the subjects that they majored in? Um, 
Paul, thank you. Yeah, it's a, another really good question. I, um, we have about over 4,000 alumni now that have gone through the program, which I guess is still, you know, really modest numbers if you think that we've been going for 26 years. So it has been a small uh, incremental process, but, you know, it's still a substantial uh, uh, group of people now. Uh, and uh, we have alumni now working all through, um, you know, uh, uh, government, um, uh, business, the media, um, uh, academia, uh, so, yeah, I mean, we have, um, I guess, from the early cohorts, those, those Indonesian language major students, a lot of those students had, and graduates had an eye on, uh, you know, working for the Department of Foreign Affairs here in, mm -hmm. in Australia. And so, obviously, there's a lot that continue to do that or other uh, government, Australian government departments that have interaction with Indonesia, um, you know, in trade, in defence, in, in, in diplomacy. Um, but now, uh, you know, I mentioned the diversification of Achichis' programs thanks to the, the new Colombo plan. So we now have the, uh, the shape of our, or the, the variety of our alumni body now is, is quite dramatic. You know, we have um, students coming through from uh, create creative arts and design and, um, uh, yeah, and lawyers and, uh, um, you know, yeah, so we, we have... Yeah, if I wanted to name some, you know, like the current, um, Australia's current High Commissioner to Brunei at the moment is an Achichis alumni. Um, oh. We have uh, many Achichis alumni in the embassy up in Jakarta uh, working on um, trade negotiations, you know, people that were working on the um, negotiation of the recent free trade agreement between Australia and Indonesia, the IATEPA. Um, many Australian universities uh, have on their staff now their, their Indonesian ec expertise, the, the Pakar Indonesia, the new generation <laughs> of in Indonesianists. Uh, mo uh, many are teachers alumni, so we've got people like Jackie Baker and Ian Wilson at Murdoch University or Simon Button, Natalie Pearson at the University of Sydney, others at ANU, Flinders, all through Australia. So these are people that are providing expertise to um, government but also uh, the general Australian population in trying to make sense of and explain um, political, cultural and social developments in Indonesia. So, um, but then we have people you, that might be familiar to Indonesian audi audiences. So, um, uh, Hannah Al-Rashid was one of our alumni, oh, she's yeah. a SOAS yeah. grad, who, who's now uh, starring in, you know, Joko Anwar films right. Uh, right. up in, in Indonesia. So, she's one of our alumni. Um, we have people, uh, Ben Sumartopo and Graham Hills, who are involved in tech startups in uh, Indonesia. So uh, mm. Graham was involved in, in setting up uh, Wigo, um, Wigo.com in Indonesia and Valadu and um, Ben Sumatopo, I think he's there's a AI or a uh, software company startup called uh, Eureka.ai that uh, he's involved in, in setting up. So yeah, look, um, teachers, alumni are all through the Australia-Indonesia bilateral uh, relationship from yeah. trade and economic ties, tourism, uh, government everywhere uh, you look. Now, I think uh, the, the final thing I'll add on this point is that it's great, it's a beginning, uh, but it's not enough. And uh, yeah. we would like to see more. We'd like to see more teachers, alumni. Um, I think the Australia-Indonesian relationship is is rich and complex, um, but it could be better. It could be richer and more complex and could grow. And I think as that, I, I would say, hopefully inevitably grows, there'll be more and more opportunities for Achichis alumni um, who have had that in-country experience that have a high degree of uh, fluency in, in Bahasa Indonesia and just understand uh, Indonesia more than your average Australian um, does, uh, there'll be more and more opportunities uh, uh, professionally for, for people like that. Yeah, obviously the results speak for itself. There you go, yeah. over the years. That's how yeah. many alumni that we've seen. And of course, Mr. Liam, uh, you know, Mr. Prince, it's very interesting that you said that this is, this is just not enough and we know that the ITG has been established for more than 25 years plus. You know, uh, is there any different goals or initiative by the IGGs now with the different change of time and you know the change of world because of the pandemic and whatnot that is happening in the present day. Uh, what would be the main goal of IGGs now? Whew. I mean, I think the, the long-term goal uh, remains the same, which is to continue building those educational links mm -hmm. uh, and, and beyond that, um, um, a broadening and a thickening of the the, the cultural and economic ties between Australia and Indonesia through the medium of, of in-country education for Australian students. Um, so that remains, I guess, our, our missi than visi, right? Mm. Um, uh, but in the short term, uh, our goal at the moment is really to rebound from the pandemic and that two-year shutdown. So, uh, you know, we, 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 we did well to 
to hang on to most of our staff and infrastructure. We did a lot virtually, you know, like everybody else, pivoting to program de delivery via virtual means. But right now we're at the, the beginning of uh, restarting our in-country operations. We have just under 40 students that have started in Jogjakarta at, at a, a couple of different universities a f as of a few weeks ago. So we're all very excited in this office that mm. if finally we get back to doing doing the work that we love and, uh, and, and can see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, 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 I, so long term, you know, the world, the universe, we're headed for the stars. Short term, um, short term, we, we really just want to get back to, to something like where we were at the begin at the end of 2019 or the beginning of, of, of 2020. So it's looking good. Our summer at the moment, we've, we've applications have just closed for our, um, the upcoming summer break, and we should have something close to 400 uh, Australian students up in Indonesia over the over the summer if all goes well. Wow. Well, there's definitely uh, better and brighter days ahead, Liam. And if you guys want to know more, feel free to visit www.achichis, that's A-C-I-C-I-S dot E-D-U dot A-U. Or you can simply just check out their Instagram at uh, achichis underscore study underscore Indonesia. Liam, thank you so much uh, for your time here and for a more in-depth look into Achichi. So we definitely wish more success for you as well as all your students that are in the program yes. and future alumni as well. By the way, before we let you go, name three of your favorite things from Indonesia. <laughs> Whoa, three. I've only got one, Paul. Okay. I was going to say, uh, and, and my, my tastes are pretty esoteric and niche, but I'm a very big Kronchong aficionado. Wow. I, I, I heard the other day, I mean, obviously the, the queen of Kronchong is, is Mbatwal Jina right? from, from, from Solo and Surakata. Nice. And I heard, I was very ex excited that there is a, a biopic, a film of Mbatwal life uh, in, the, in, the, in the works at the moment. So I'm very much looking forward uh, to seeing what they do with that and watching that when it eventually wow. comes out. But yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to pick the, the, uh, the, the music of, uh, of Wild Jinnah, I think, is my f absolute favorite thing. Unbelievable. Love there's, so many, the there's, too many there's, there's too many really to choose, but you made me choose, so I'm going to say Well, that's, that's great. I thought you were going to go with something simple like rendang or nasi goreng. But there you go, Rancho. <laughs> great <laughs> choice. <laughs> Liam, thank you so much for your time. Have yourself a great week. No problem. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank yeah, you very thank, much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Caroline. All thank right, you. Take care.